नमस्ते बिटिया हमेशा खुश रहो बिटिया अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू यू ऑल माई सेल्फ जे वी एन डॉक्टर अभी जैन असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ प्रैक्टिस ऑफ मेडिसिन इन फैकल्टी ऑफ होम्योपैथिक साइंस एट ज्योति विद्यापीठ वुमेंस यूनिवर्सिटी जयपुर इन दिस सीरीज ऑफ लेक्चर्स वी आर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द डिजीज ऑफ द डर्मेटोलॉजी और द डिजीज ऑफ द स्किन इन टूडेज लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट अर्टिकेरिया एंड एनजीओडीमा so <clears throat> urticaria is a very common disease that uh, we see in a lot of patients so in today's lecture we are going to learn about urticaria its etiopathogenesis the uh, different clinical features how to diagnose a case of urticaria and uh, the management of urticaria and angioedema so let's start with urticaria urticaria what is urticaria it is a commonly seen disease condition so it is very common disease condition in which there are transient eruptions transient eruptions means the eruptions that are coming for a very short interval of time and <clears throat> these eruptions are with with raised and circumscribed uh, these eruptions uh, usually you see these eruptions as the raised eruptions with circumscribed erythematous or edematous swelling so there is erythema there is edema erythematous edematous swelling and uh, of the superficial dermis and it is usually associated with itching so what is happening in urticaria it is a disease condition in which there is transient eruption so transient means it is occurring for a, a short interval of time transient eruptions of uh, raised and circumscribed erythematous edematous swelling on the superficial dermis and it is accompanied by much itching urticaria or hives hives is the synonym of urticaria these are basically transient lesion that are composed of a central vein so in the urticaria or hives there is a transient lesion and it is composed of central vein that is surrounded by a erythematous halo or flare so uh, these are the transient lesions and these are composed of the central vein and these are surrounded by erythematous halo or the flare the individual lesions are round oval and figurate so the individual lesions of urticaria it can be round it can be oval in shape or it can be figurate figurate means uh, whatever surface that you are getting in contact with the skin the same uh, surface is getting uh, you are getting the eruption of that particular shape so that is known as figurate and are often pruritic so there is itching that is present in such lesions so <clears throat> pruritus edematous pink or erythematous plaques are there and <clears throat> these range from the diameter of uh, papules to giant collagenic lesions so uh, in urticaria or hives you are getting a transient lesion these are pruritic these are edematous these are pink to erythematous plaques and with a whitish halo around the margins of the individual lesion i have given the shapes of different urticaria lesions in the uh, notes that i have provided to you on the portal so just go through those uh, e notes and you are uh, you will be able to recognize what is urticaria urticaria you might have seen in lot of patient because this is a very common disease that you can encounter it in day to day practice so <clears throat> coming back to urticaria these lesions uh, the size of the lesion can be uh, from the small size to the great collagenic lesions of around 10 to 20 cm in the diameter now what are the different causes of uh, urticaria urticaria can be uh, due to the different type of drugs so <clears throat> it can uh, be due to the different type of drugs or uh, due to systemic infections or certain food materials especially the shellfish to which uh, the people might be allergic to so it is due to drugs uh, due to systemic infection or the foods especially shellfish and if the individual lesion lasts for greater than 24 hours so if uh, the lesions of urticaria usually these are transient lesion which disappear within a short period of time but if these lesions are arising for greater than 24 hours then it is considered as urticarial vasculitis now there is an area of focal dermal edema so there is a, a area of focal dermal edema that is secondary to the transient increase in capillary permeability so what is happening in this particular disease uh, in response to certain agents there is uh, increased capillary permeability so increased capillary permeability is causing the focal dermal edema and the lesions are discrete and confluent 
it can be edematous with erythematous papules and plaques that are characteristic of wheeling eruptions. So uh, we are again going to discuss all these things in the pathology. So uh, do not worry about it. So the lesions are uh, discrete and confluent. These are edematous with erythematous papules and plaques that are characteristic of the wheeling eruptions. Now uh, they can be either acute or chronic. So urticaria can be acute or it can be chronic. And it is characterized by the, uh, uh, the lesions the individual lesions that are lasting for usually less than 24 hours. And if they are uh, remaining for more than 24 hours, then it is known as articarial vasculitis. Uh, the acute and chronic articaria have a wide variety of allergic etiologies. So whenever we are talking about the articaria, acute or chronic articaria have a wide variety of the allergic etiologies <clears throat> and reflect the edema in the dermis. Now, there are two types of urticaria that we are going to discuss. One is the acute urticaria and the second one is the chronic urticaria. Acute urticaria is a self-limiting disease and the wheels resolve within 24 hours, but it may last up to four to six weeks only. And it is common in the adults of both sexes. So acute urticaria, it is self-limiting and the wheels resolve within 24 hours, but it may last up to four to six weeks. These are common in young adults and both sexes. The chronic urticaria, the wheels continue daily or for most of the days for longer than six weeks. So what is happening in chronic urticaria? The wheels are appear appearing daily for most of the days and it is lasting for more than six weeks. So if it is lasting less than six weeks, then it is acute urticaria. And if it is lasting for more than six weeks, it is chronic urticaria. This is common in women of the fourth, fifth decade of the life. Now, what is the pathogenesis of urticaria? What we are going to see in urticaria? Urticaria is basically a dermal lesion, a dermal lesion uh, that is resulting from the vascular dilatation. So it is a, a dermal lesion and that is resulting from the uh, vascular dilatation and the leakage of the fluid into the skin. So there is vascular dilatation and leakage of fluid into the skin in response to molecules released from the mast cells. So there are certain mast cells that are releasing certain molecules and in response to those molecules, there is vascular dilatation and leakage of fluid into the skin. The mast cell degranulation, it occurs in the following condition. Mast cell degranulation, it is seen in type one hypersensitivity that is causing massive degranulation and sometimes anaphylaxis. It is also seen in spontaneous mast cell degranulation in the chronic urticaria. It is also seen in chemical mast cell degranulation and in autoimmunity. So mast cell degranulation is seen in type one hypersensitivity. It can be seen in spontaneous mast cell degranulation in chronic urticaria. It can be seen in uh, mast cell degranulation and autoimmunity. Now, what are the different causes of uh, urticaria and angioedema? So the causes can be classified into two varieties. One is primary cutaneous disorders and the second one is the systemic disorders. So the causes of urticaria or the angioedema, it is of two types. One is primary cutaneous disorder and the second one is the systemic disorder. In the primary cutaneous disorder, we have three types of things that we are going to see. One is the uh, acute and chronic urticaria. The second is the physical urticaria and the third is the angioedema. So in primary, uh, we have discussed there are two different types of causes of uh, urticaria and angioedema. We have primary cutaneous causes and secondary causes. In the primary cutaneous causes, we have acute and chronic urticaria, we have physical urticaria and we have angioedema. In the physical urticaria, we again have four different types of urticaria, which includes dermatographism, solar urticaria, cold urticaria and cholinergic urticaria. So we have dermatographism, we have solar urticaria, cold urticaria and the cholinergic urticaria. Next, we come to the systemic disease. In the systemic disease, again, we have four uh, types of systemic disease that are responsible. Uh, the first one is the urticarial vasculitis. Urticarial vasculitis when the urticaria is lasting for greater than 24 hours. There can be infection with the hepatitis B and C that can lead to the development of urticaria. There is also serum sickness and the fourth is the angioedema. Angioedema can be hereditary or it can be acquired. So we have discussed about the primary cutaneous disorder and the secondary uh, and the systemic disease. In the primary, we have discussed about acute and chronic, physical urticaria and the angioedema. In the systemic, we have urticarial vasculitis, hepatitis B and C infection, 
serum sickness and angioedema. Now, uh, what are the different causes of acute and chronic urticaria? Coming to the causes of acute and chronic urticaria, we have uh, number one, it can be due to autoimmune causes. Autoimmune due to the production of antibodies that cross-link the IgE receptors on the mast cells. Next, we have the allergens. Allergens that are present in the food, inhalants and the injections with fruits, shellfish, milk products and chocolate peanuts. So there are certain allergens in contact of which the patient can develop urticaria. The third is the drugs. If a patient is taking certain drugs, then it can also lead to the development of urticaria. Drugs like salicylates, aspirin, codin, and NSAIDs. Along with it, there can be antibiotics, dextron, and ACE inhibitors. Urticaria can also develop due to contact with animal saliva or the latex. Or it can be due to physical causes. Physical causes like heat, cold, pressure, sun, and water. Another causes of uh, urticaria is infection, infection that is seen in case of viral hepatitis and infectious mononucleosis, HIV. Other condition includes systemic lupus erythematosus, SLE, pregnancy, intestinal parasites, and the idiopathic causes. So what are the different causes that we have discussed? Uh, the causes of acute and chronic urticaria includes autoimmune, allergens, different type of allergens, different drugs, contact with animal saliva or latex, physical with heat, cold, pressure, sun, water, infections uh, with viral hepatitis and infectious mononucleosis, HIV, etc., and other conditions like SLE, pregnancy, intestinal parasites. In the condition when the cause cannot be found out, it is known as the idiopathic urticaria. Next, we come to the urticarial vasculitis. Urticarial vasculitis can be due to hepatitis B, SLE, or it can be idiopathic. Urticarial vasculitis is a condition when the urticaria is lasting for greater than 24 hours. So it is seen with hepatitis B infection, SLE, and it can be idiopathic. So what is articarial vasculitis? It is an immune complex disease. So articarial vasculitis is basically an immune complex disease <coughs> that may be uh, confused with the simple urticaria. The lesions are lasting for greater than 24 hours and it develops as a central petechi and it is observed after the articarial phase has uh, resolved. So when you are going to see articarial vasculitis, uh, it is appearing for uh, when it is lasting for greater than 24 hours and develops with a central petechi and it is observed even after the articarial phase has been resolved. The patient complains of burning rather than pruritus. So in articaria, we had uh, itching, whereas in case of articarial vasculitis, we have uh, burning. Now we are going to discuss about the physical urticaria. In the physical urticaria, we have dermatographism. Dermatographism means the shape of the lesion that So in the dermatographism, there is linear wheels that is following minor pressure or scratching on the skin. It affects around 5% of the population. Next, we have solar urticaria. It occurs within minutes of the sun exposure. Next, we have the cold urticaria. It occurs due to exposure of the cold. And at the end, we have cholinergic urticaria that is precipitated by heat, exercise, or emotions. So in the uh, physical urticaria, we have dermatographism that is caused by linear marks on the skin, solar urticaria that is appearing due to the exposure to the sun, cold urticaria, exposure to cold, and cholinergic urticaria that is precipitated by heat, exertion, and the emotions. Now, what are the clinical features of urticaria? Uh, urticaria is characterized by itchy erythematous macules that develop into wheels. So there are itchy erythematous macules and these are developing into the wheels and it consists of pale, pink, or red edematous raised skin areas. So these can be pale, pink, or red edematous areas that are seen on the skin. And the areas are of varying shape, size, and the surrounding flare. There is transient migratory lesion with a linear or annular or arcuate pattern. So there can be, uh, these are different type of lesions. There are transient, these can be migratory lesions. These are either linear or annular or the arcuate pattern form. There is itching that is present usually at the night, but the patient tends to rub rather than the uh, scratching. The lesions resolve having a normal skin surface without any excoriation marks. So when the lesions are getting resolved, there is no excoriation mark that is left. Uh, 
and if the lesions are uh, there for greater than 24 hours it is known as um, articarial vasculitis half of the cases of urticaria these are associated with angioedema urticaria resulting from the dermal edema whereas if there is subcutaneous edema it is known as angioedema so if the superficial dermal uh, layer is involved it is known as urticaria but if the subcutaneous tissue is observed then it is known as um, involved then it is known as angioedema there are few cases that can be associated with malaise fever headache dizziness nausea vomiting abdominal pain arthralgias feeling of lump in the throat with wheezing shortness of breath syncope and severe acute form of anaphylaxis so some cases can be associated with malaise we have fever headache dizziness nausea vomiting abdominal pain arthralgia feeling of lump in the throat wheezing shortness of breath syncope and severe anaphylaxis <clears throat> i have also given the picture of uh, angioedema that will show you the different sites at which angioedema can easily be recognized now what is angioedema angioedema is basically characterized by large non pruritic large it is large condition with non pruritic the urticaria was pruritic but angioedema is usually non pruritic or slightly itchy it is non pitting pale or pink diffuse swelling that is occurring on the face it is affecting the eyelids the lips tongue pharynx larynx hands feet genitalia ears and the neck so lot of areas affected eyelids are affecting lips are affecting tongue pharynx larynx your hand feet genitalia ears and neck is getting affected the lesions of the angioedema may last for several days now i have already told you the sites and these are the sites where the subcutaneous tissue is getting involved angioedema may occur in alone or it can occur in case uh, along with the urticaria including the urticarial vasculitis and the physical urticarias urticarial lesion can also be seen in the patients with mastocytosis hypo or hyperparathyroidism and systemic onset juvenile idiopathic arthritis that is also known as the stills disease so in both the cases juvenile and adult onset still disease the lesions coincide with the fever spike and are transient and are due to the dermal infiltrates of the neutrophils now how to diagnose a case of urticaria urticaria can be diagnosed by the history so history with the special attention to possible offending exposures and or ingestion as well as the duration of the lesions so we can identify the uh, lesion of urticaria by the history and the exposure history skin testing can be done to the food and inhalant uh, antigens uh, you can also perform physical provocation test that is challenging with vibratory or cold stimuli we can also go for full, full blood count and uh, including the eosinophil count in the case of underlying parasites esr may be elevated in case of vasculitis we can also check for the urea electrolytes thyroid and liver function test for the underlying systemic disorder total ige specific ige are the to the possible allergens example shellfish and peanuts can be checked for we can also check for anti nuclear factor that may be positive in chronic urticarias or urticarial vasculitis skin biopsy is useful in urticarial vasculitis there are certain conditions which can resemble uh, urticaria or angioedema so in the differential diagnosis we can think of atopic dermatitis we can think of contact sensitivity cutaneous mastocytosis that is known as urticaria pigmentosa and systemic mastocytosis now how to manage a case of urticaria whenever a case of urticaria or angioedema is coming to us first of all the in the management we have to identify and avoid the offending agents first of all identify the disease condition and avoid the offending agents uh, we can give h1 antihistamines uh, non sedative antihistamines like cetirizine and levocetirizine can be given h2 blockers that includes ranitidine and patients with a history of angioedema or anaphylaxis should carry self administration injection of adrenaline because it can be life threatening condition therefore adrenaline injection is must for such patients topical glucocorticoids have no values because this is occurring due to the mast cells and systemic glucocorticoids should not be used because of the long term toxicity so in the management of angioedema and urticaria we have to first of all identify and avoid the offending agents h1 antihistamines are given non sedative antihistamines like cetirizine and levocetirizine can be given 
H2 blockers, which includes ranitidine, and patient with a history of angioedema or anaphylaxis, they should carry a kit of adrenaline. So this is all about the uh, urticaria and angioedema. I have also mentioned about uh, the various uh, medicines that could homeopathic medicines that could be given in case of urticaria. So I would suggest you to go through the uh, e notes that I have uploaded and check for the uh, various homeopathic medicines that can be given. So this was all for uh, today about the urticaria and angioedema. This session is powered by Digital Version 2.0, Jyoti Vidya Peet Women's University. I hope you have understood the session properly. If you have any query, please mention in the comment box and I'll try to resolve it. So this was all for today. Uh, we will be meeting in the next lecture with a new topic. So thank you very much. Have a good day.